My name is Peter Stanton and I own a machine shop here in Houston called Edge Precision Metal Products. And up till about 2005, I owned the whole big shop here and I sold it. And now I just lease space in the shop and I have a Mazak Integrex E650 machine and a Mitsubishi Horizontal Mill uh, MH80E, I believe the model is of that. And a CNC tool and cutter grinder and a, wire, a, little, a small wire EDM, a uh, Mitsubishi FX20, I believe is the model number, and a, a Zeiss CMM here, and that's all that I have here in the shop. And I just work on these machines by myself now. But I do do work predominantly for the shop that, the people that bought my shop, and they changed the name of the shop then, and I, I retained the name Edge Precision for myself, and now it's called Centerline Manufacturing. This is the place that I have my machinery in that I lease space from, actually. But it is the shop that I used to own up till 2005. And this duplex job I was doing for them, they knew I was making videos and they've seen some of the videos, they didn't have any trouble with them or problem. But then uh, um, somebody from their customer came through that's never been here before and uh, the end of last week and now he went back and I guess their legal department saw some of the videos and they don't they they want me to take them down basically and that's that's the story there and so I I marked some of the videos private that show their part completed in the video uh, I think that a lot of people saw them already so they get the idea of what I was trying to do and my drive was just to show machining processes and how I was the problems I had and, and what my solutions were for those problems and I, I think it's important to show real jobs and real solutions that we that we have in the machine shop nowadays and the way we do work nowadays I mean I'm not like a hundred percent with the times even myself my machinery is uh, the newest machine I own in here is probably almost 10 years old, so I'm not like the most up-to-date machinery anyway, but it's not too much different than what's done now with the most modern machines. And, and I was just trying to show some sort of like more industrial type of work. And there's nothing wrong with the hobby work and the, and the manual equipment. I've, all, I've done that myself too. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's very little on, on YouTube showing more detailed uh, um, CNC, I guess you might call it, or, or um, work that is actually done in the machine shop nowadays. And, and so I was trying to show that, and that was my main drive. So unfortunately, I had to take these videos down. And if you're a new subscriber, I hope that doesn't put you off on the channel because I'm still going to try to show as much as I can and and uh, and I will show it and I just have to be I, I was being careful with this job in fact I wasn't showing any technical details about the parts themselves because I didn't care about the parts I just wanted to show my machining setups and what I was doing but apparently they have an issue with that so that's where that's at and the rest of this video is going to be about a, an issue I was having with the chip blaster on the horizontal mill and how I resolved that it wasn't too big of a problem fortunately and, and it was a pretty easy fix and I'm going to show grinding some uh, three millimeter gun drills that are actually for this duplex job but it's a, just a tool and so nobody should have an issue with that and I just barely got back into my house after the hurricane and the flood and the rebuilding and, and it's not totally finished but I'm able to live there now again and so I can uh, get back in the garage and sort out what's happen happening in the garage with the machines and stuff and, and we'll have some content coming from the garage as well on the, my little CNC machines in the garage. So um, if you're a new subscriber, thanks for subscribing and, and uh, like I said, I hope it doesn't put you off too much with this issue of, of taking down videos. Um, but like I said, I want to show real jobs if possible and real solutions to real jobs and you know these 
I, I mostly machine moderately tough to hard machine materials and, and, uh, and so I think it's of value. And like, thanks for subscribing if you're new and if you haven't and this video or, or any of my videos is of interest to you, please subscribe and enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, we had a little problem on the chip blaster on the um, Mitsubishi and I had to send off for these parts. And they just came in today. This is um, a Parker valve for the high pressure side. And I'm hoping this is gonna fix our issue with the, the chip blaster uh, coolant system. And it's one thing I, it really irritates me is when I go to run the machine and uh, something doesn't work on the machine and then I gotta work on the machine. So we're going to go over there and replace these uh, parts on the chip blaster and see if that solves our problem. So here's the issue with the chip blaster right here this uh, solenoid which is uh, this piece here but in order to replace this which actually goes this way I gotta replace the cartridge in there because this this combination is no longer available. Um, this machine was built in 1999 and uh, Chip Blaster, I guess, ha no longer has these parts. They're Parker parts and I, I tried to find this, just this, I think that's the only problem is this uh, um, coil, but can't seem to get it anymore very easily. So I gotta replace this whole thing. So we're going to uh, move over here. I'm gonna have to take this off, which I already had it apart, so it's kind of loose. And then um, swap this out. This, this actually will plug in to it right here, the same. So that shouldn't be too big a deal there, but I've got to pull this piece out and put this one in this uh, manifold block. And there's a bunch of coolant in the tank up here right now. And what I'm gonna try to do is do this without draining the tank. So there's probably gonna make a mess here a little bit, leak coolant all over and hopefully that won't be too big of a deal. Cause the, the tank above, up, up above here, which is this is the bottom of the tank right up here. I gotta find a wrench that large enough to fit on here. Uh, maybe a big crescent wrench or something. This is a pretty good size hex. Start this out and then hopefully I can quickly thread that out and, and thread this back in and won't leak too much coolant all over the place. If it, if it leaks at all, I'm not sure. that It has to kind of come through the pump over there. And it may not leak that much, we'll see. Found this wrench here. See how much this leaks. Kind of hoping it won't leak too much. Okay. I'm gonna kind of put this here just to maybe soak up some of this coolant that comes out of here. Man, this isn't that easy to turn. Thought it would be a little easier to turn by hand and look like it's gonna be. We'll get this ready up here. Okay.
kind of trying to hold this in to the last minute. I don't know how much coolant's going to leak out of here, if any at all, really. It looks like some's going to. Okay. The valve's basically the same, except you see it's it's a different length here for the the solenoid relay. Hoping this is going to cure my issue with this thing. We'll see. Branch is a little bit too long to fit in here. coolant system puts out this side of it is a little more than a thousand psi i think it's like rated at 1200 i think depending on how you adjust the regulator okay that does that part of it now this this part of it's just a a plug here it should be just change this out. So here's the new solenoid. Make sure that's on there correctly. Should just plug right in. Everything's right. Okay. I'm glad I didn't have to drain that whole tank and do all that. And uh, also it'll save me having to possibly reprime the pump and everything. This. Let's see if I got some wrenches here. Okay. And that should be it. Hopefully that'll cure the problem. Let me show you a little bit more about this chip blaster. You can see here, if you can see it, that's just basically a high pressure pump hooked to a motor. I don't know if you can see that coupling back there and the motor. And it goes into this manifold and then over here. And this hose right down there goes out to the machine. So it's just like a, almost like a pressure washing pump type of pump, but this three, you know, three piston type high pressure pump. And that's really all it is. And then it has this uh, tank here. It's got a filter. This is on the intake side of the pump, this filter, which I changed. I just changed the the element, the filter element, it's just like a um, kind of dirty. I needed to change it anyway. It's a um, like a sock-like thing. So we're gonna see. Let's come over here and let's turn the machine on. Oop. And see if the um, it's made any difference. Hopefully, it corrected my problem. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do something else. So I was fixing to do the fourth operation on these parts, and I need that coolant supply. And it, uh, it didn't turn on. Let me run this down here a little bit. Run the uh, run the X over here. So, um, in fact, let me stick the camera down right here. I've got it on this Noga magnetic base. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tool out of the spindle here, just so uh, it'll just blow straight out if it works. 
and it doesn't blow all over the place out that tool. So let's see what happens here. Okay. Well, that looks pretty good. Seemed to be the problem. We let it run just a little bit, bleed any air out of there. Doesn't look like it's a lot of pressure unless you have smaller coolant holes on the tool. See, then it, and now it looks like it has a lot more pressure. So it needs that, it needs that back pressure from the smaller holes to build up pressure at the pump side. So that was a relatively simple fix. The drill grinder or a carbide grinder, whatever you call this thing. I had to make this little block because the, looking at the uh, chart here, this is what the, the manufacturer of the drills, this, this, uh, this particular kind of drill, they sent me to, to grind the tip this way. So these are the angles and the, and the clearance angles and, and angles of the tip that need a ground for a, what it says for a drill that's 55 thousandths to 157 and a half thousandths. And then this would be for drills 157.6 to 0.7874 diameter, these angles and clearance angles and angles, which this is the normal tip I normally grind. And that's that uh, AccuFinish grinder is set up to grind that tip. But in order to grind some of the angles of the other, I had to mill this new angle in here, which is a, a 30 degree angle. I had to make this block because it doesn't go down. If you look at this, it doesn't go down far enough. It only goes down to 25 degrees. And I needed to uh, go to a steeper angle for the middle, uh, the middle facet which is, is this one right here. Which, this is kind of difficult to read, but you gotta go down, you gotta go to a 35 degree angle. So I needed 10 more degrees. And instead of modifying the machine down here, so I thought about modifying this um, trunnion thing here, but it's just easier to make this block here to do it. So in order to get started here, you gotta put the drill. I also had to modify this um, V-block, put this notch in here because this drill is so short, it has to come up into there. But you have to, you line this thing up with this, um, it kind of, it, it hits on the edges of these, uh, I don't know if you can see that in this picture or not, but it hit, it kind of hits on the edges of these flutes, the flute of the drill on this, uh, this angle here. And that kind of controls the, the rotational setting of the drill. So you kind of get it in the bottom of that V and snug it down. So it looks, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it looks something like that. We take it, and I, I uh, the chart shows here, if we look at this chart, that this is gonna be, the tip of this drill is gonna be a quarter of the diameter, or D times divided by four over to the point where that point of the drill is. So I used my optical comparator here to do that with. So I go over here to the comparator. Okay, that's not too bad. You can kind of see, because I, I got to come in at an angle here because you really can't see the, the shadow because it's too bright in relation to what the camera sees. But what I usually do is I line this up on the bottom of the drill there, and then I, over here, the digital readout, I zero the, the y-axis out over here. And I'm gonna raise it up 90, uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, 29 and a half thousandths. This is a three millimeter drill, so a quarter of that is about 29 and a half. I mean, that doesn't, you know, the tenths of a thousandth don't really make too much difference here. If you get it that close, it's close enough. You see the point is almost lined up. 
from the um, previous grind. So this is the first angle at the maximum angle of the table on this side of the drill, which is the outside chamfer of the drill. And then you raise it up to 15 degrees. Come over here and grind this side. And at this point, we want to put it back on the comparator over here. But this is about what I'm looking for. Then we got to go back and grind the, the subsequent angles. Down, all the way down to the maximum angle, right in the middle, which is what I made this block for. And it barely, barely takes anything. And a little bit more, just a hair more. Kind of hard to even tell when you're grinding anything with all the noise going on in the background here. I can't even hardly tell. Then we got to grind this angle, which uses this same slot, but with the table all the way down. Grind this facet on the, which lets the coolant come around the tip of the drill and down the, the flute. So that's um, actually all there is to grinding the angles. And then we've got to grind a little bit of a, a chamfer. Just like that. And that's it. So that's the first one. I, gotta, I just got to do the rest of them now. It only takes a few minutes. It takes me longer to explain it and show it in the video than it does to actually do it.